Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti, and on today's uh, segment, we're looking at Ephesians chapter 5, and we're starting at verse 11, and it's entitled, Have No Fellowship with the Darkness. Let's look. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 and 12, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shameful for it is shameful or it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Well, folks, the Bible tells us right here, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Why? Because fellowship here is important. Our fellowship should be with the Lord, Kononias. It should be with the Lord. And the Bible talks about the unfruitful works. Now, what does the word unfruitful represent? It talks about something that is barren. It has nothing in it. It is dead, like a dead womb that cannot give birth to children. And so here he says that all the works of the flesh are unfruitful, they are barren, and they will be burned up in the end. Can a Christian be unfruitful absolutely that's why paul talks about that you are yet carnal you are yet carnal we can be very carnal in the way we live in the way we think in the way we act and he says have no fellowship with barrenness why because the works as is in the greek are argon and it talks about the deeds and the things that we do and the labor of our hands I was sharing with my wife yesterday how important this word is. Why? Because see, here we see the oracles of God, the statutes of God, the principles of God. That when we apply them to our life, when we allow the Holy Spirit to bring it into our life, we will be fruitful. We will be trees that are pruned by God's hand. And it's interesting that I asked my wife this morning, if God says something 11,000 times, do you think he's serious about it? She said, if he says it once, it's enough. But 11,000, over 11,000 times, we see the word et in the word of God. What does that mean? Well, maybe we can put it up for them, sweetie. Maybe we could put up the aleftav, the first and the last letter. I want you to look at it this morning because this is where our fellowship is. I have, I have engraved in my hands, in my body, the word of God in my mind because I want my hands to be filled with the word of God. I want my, I want my life to be filled with the word of God. I don't want to walk, walk in darkness you see those two letters there? Actually, it belongs uh, the other way. It belongs to the left top, so maybe we can correct that. So here, we see here that the word, a left top, or the letters, these two letters represent the entire word of God. And this is what's interesting about it, that this, these two letters gives us the revelation of who God is, because it is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now, it doesn't matter. I mean, we could put it the other way, but your reading in Hebrew is from right to left. Oh. So, so what happens is this, and we're all learning. And what's interesting is that the Word of God engraved in our hearts, in our minds. He says, this is the covenant that I will make with my people in the last day. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10. I will put my laws, I will etch them, I will write them, I will carve them into their minds and into their hearts. Wow, I don't know about you, but I want the Word of God to be, in, to be carved in me all the time. Well, we said, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. And of course, darkness, let's just, just take a quick look at this. And it talks about the night. It, and we're not, to, we're not just talking about the night when there is no sun shining, although we know, and I don't know about you, but I grew up with a song that said the freaks come out at night, and believe me, they do. Oh. And I got to tell you, I was among them because I used to go out at night and do things. 
But the Bible tells me that he took us out of the darkness and brought us into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. That we should show forth the praises of him who took us out of the darkness and brought us into his marvelous light. I'm part of a priesthood now. If you are a believer, you're part of a priesthood now and you are no longer living in the night. Now, night also represents ignorance of the divine things, ignorance of the divine things. And it talks about ungodliness and immorality. See, so darkness here, when he says, have nothing to do with the works, the labors of ignorance and immorality, but rather reprove them. Here is the word rebuke. Correct that. Now he's talking to the believers. Now, folks, we have a legal right to hate something. What can we hate as Christians? We can hate those things that are in darkness. We can hate sin. And the Bible tells us that we must live a life of love without dissimulation. That means dissimulation is a word without ill feelings, without emotions that are disturbed, without sick things that come into our mind, thoughts, things that are evil. But watch this. We must include, watch this, that which is good. Romans chapter 12, verse 9 tells us easily that we should live a life of love. In other words, we must not conceal thoughts, feelings, and sick emotions against people, but have the love of Christ. And this love should be penetrating through our attitudes, through our thoughts, and through our actions. And therefore, we will not have our hearts and our minds in the things of the flesh in darkness. Now we do things for the glory of God. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17, I love this scripture. Whatsoever we do in word or deed, the our works, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks, lifting up your hands, lifting up your heart, giving thanks to God the Father by Him, through Him, Jesus, for from Him and through Him and to him be all things. I love that. As believers, it is good to walk in the unity of love. And Jesus said that the world will know that you are my disciples. And that means that we are mimickers, that we have been imitators of Christ. That Watch this. We are the copy. He is the original. Hallelujah for that. Now, who are disciples? Disciples are those who have been learned about the way of Christ, and they have learned to make others learners of Christ. And so, therefore, what should we do as believers? The whole concept of the commission to go out into the world is this. Go ye and, and teach. Teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And lo, I will be with you to the end of the world. Amen. See, we can trust that. So watch this. What is it that happens when a Christian begins to get involved in dark things? Well, what happens is that there is no holy fruit. And God wants to see holy fruit. God is holy, folks. And the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, he tells us, Be ye holy, for I am holy. We have no excuse. That's why we must study hard the Word of God to know what pleases God. We talked about that. So therefore, we do not touch. See, I want the Word of God to be in my hands when I do something. I want the Word of God to be in my mind. I want the Word of God to be in my heart. I want the Word of God to be in my feet. And everything that I do, I want it to be there. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't fail. I do fail, but I'm learning. Watch this. I'm learning that in my failure to push forward, not backwards. So failure for me is simply more power for me to go forward and say, I need to get it right. The example of Christ's love teaches us not to get involved in those things which are dark. And here, Christ is pictured. When we look, let's look at five, um, at uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 through 6. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we already went through this. We have videos on this. 
But be ye therefore imitators of God, dear children, and walk in love, even as Christ, who has loved us, and he has given himself as an, as an offering, a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. See, here, Christ is pictured as the sweet-smelling savor. When we are engaged in the things of the flesh, there is no sweet savor to the nostrils of God the Father. Only, listen, only a foul smell of, of defilement. And I don't know about you, but I want God to be pleased with my life. Don't you want God to be pleased with your life? Don't you want God to look down at you and say, I am pleased with the way you are. I love something about Abraham. I was talking to my wife the other day about Abraham in chapter 18 of Genesis. You know, when, when, the, when the three visitors came to him, one was God and two were angels. They were on their way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but he stopped by Abraham's tent. I love that. Stop by my tent, God. Be pleased to stop by my tent. You see, Lot faced his door, hit the door of his tent to Sodom and Gomorrah. It was green. It was against, it was, it was, it, he was looking uh, to Sodom and Gomorrah, so the sun was behind him. But the Bible tells us that Abraham, his tent door was toward the sun. And in the heat of the day, he saw three figures come to him and he knew who it was and he ran to them. And he asked them to stay and to eat and to fellowship, to refresh themselves. And I love what the Bible says, what God said concerning Abraham. He said, I know him. That he will teach his children how to keep the commandments of God. That he will teach his children how to walk in the way. Folks, if you want God to recognize you, he listen, you must walk in the way and teach your children, your family in the way. I've taught my children the way, all of them. I speak to Jesus, Jesus, Je I speak about Jesus. My wife speaks about Jesus, 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 nothing more than Jesus. It will always be Jesus and nothing else will work. So when we speak, the Bible tells us that we should not speak anything that is ungodly. The Apostle Paul is not, watch this, he is not, he's not objecting to good humor. No, 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 no. But those things which are unsuitable, unclean, jesting, should not be even put on, the, on our lips. And folks, we need to learn this more and more. Hallelujah. Our speech must be seasoned with the Word of God, with salt. It tells us in Colossians, let your word be always, uh, let your word be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer each other. Oh, hallelujah. You see, folks, we're supposed to have no contact with those things of the pagan life. Do you know that the pagan life sacrifices to demons. Now the Bible tells us that Christ has set us free and therefore we should stand in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and do not, watch this, do not be entangled again by a yoke of slavery. What does that tell us? It is not talking about your salvation. It is talking about living a life that is free, full of Christ, full of his holiness, full of his purity. I don't know about you, but I'm going to continue to preach Christ, Christ, Christ until he comes. Because there's nothing more. We have to give Christ and nothing more. Without the atonement of Jesus Christ, where would our freedom be? The Bible says we have died to the passions of this world. We have died to the things of this world. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the passions, the lust of the flesh. We have to say, God, thus and no more. No more. We have to come to that point. There's things in my life. Say, no more. It's not going to happen. And I'm fighting vehemently. The soul? Oh, folks, the desires of the soul, the hunger of the soul? You want to go toward that thing. And I remember what Dake said, a minister of the gospel. He said this, when you decide to go against sin, it's going to be hard on your soul. You got to fight with every strength that is within you to say no. Do you know something? 
I've learned this for myself. It is very tough to say no to the lusts and to the passions of the flesh. But when you learn to say no and you stay, you stay in the no factor when it comes to your soul, you will win. And what will come over your soul is a delight of God's holiness. And you will want that more than anything else. I listen, I want God's holiness in my mind and in every thought. You know, when you're sleeping and all those thoughts come to you, say no to the flesh and replace it with the word of God. Sometimes I just, I just, Oh, but well, most of the time, I just put the word of God and I begin to quote the word of God in my mind. But this is what he told Joshua. How do you keep away from the things of the flesh? He told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That means if it's coming out of your mouth, it's got to be in your mind. And if it's in your mind, it's got to go in the heart. And Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, what speaks? The mouth speaks, and therefore we should be speaking the word of God. Nothing else. I want my lips to be graced with the word of God. The whole concept of the new life of, of Christ in us is to walk in the righteousness and not surrender our bodies as instruments of unrighteousness. And we see this in Romans chapter 6. Matter of fact, let's, let me turn that. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 11, it says here. Well, you know what? I'm going to start in verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, reckon yourselves, reckon also yourselves dead to sin. Wow. Reckon yourselves also to be dead in the deed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let sin not therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Wow. You see how sin reigns in your body. How? Because it reigns through the fallen nature. The fallen nature speaks all the time. It has a voice, and the voice says, come on, you can do this. There's nothing wrong with it. Come on, you're only human. Come on, you don't have to do this. You don't have to always try to be holy. It's not going to happen. That is a lie. The Bible tells us this, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and of a well-balanced, self-controlled, healed, healthy mind. And it's in that mind, the Bible says, we have the mind of Christ. I remember when I first, when I first started walking this Christian walk, man, it felt like I was losing my mind. Came out of so much junk in my life. And I remember, I began, listen, I got into this word. I locked myself in a room for almost three years. Just locked up. A year and a half here and a year and a half there. And I just began to study the word of God. You know what I did? I began to look up the word mind and see we didn't have all the computers we have now and all the internet we had books right so I had to look at the concordance and open up every verse of scripture and look and I looked up the word mind and thought and imagination I just kept looking and writing and looking and writing and looking and writing. and one day I told the devil you're right I did lose my mind I have the mind of Christ now and that mind is not going anywhere. Are you hearing me? Study the word of God until it studies you. Look into the mirror of God's word until it looks back at you. Some of us, we look at the word, we go like this, we say, we open out, we say, oh, the Bible says this. And we, we read and we go, okay, amen. We pray and then we leave. And then through the, throughout the day, we're so busy with everything else that we don't even know that we're being attacked in our minds with all the lust and all the passions of this world. We're being attacked. And finally we wake up and say, whoa, whoa, what's going on? He says, you only looked into the mirror and walked away. When you look into the mirror, you got to keep your face in the mirror so that you can see everything that you are and everything who he is. And therefore, watch this. We're going to pick up tomorrow about being partakers of the good. Because this is where we find our strength in the Word of God. I don't know about you, but I get excited about the Word of God. I love the Word of God. Sometimes I just think about the book and I cry. Because I want to be more like Jesus 
in everything that I do and everything that I say. I don't want to be in the fruitful, the unfruitfulness of darkness and the dead works. They, God calls them dead works. But we are alive in Christ and we must learn how to walk in Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful spirit-filled day. And remember this, you are light. Walk in the light and stay away from the darkness. Amen.